All right, guys, so the time has come to get to brewing uh, my first batch of beer, and that will be the uh, beer kit I'll be going with here. And um, first, I've got to add this uh, item. Uh, so you can see there what I'm going to do. I have to add the spigot spout. Um, it's an upgrade to this fermentation vessel. Um, and I will show you after what it looks like. So there is before. Here is after, and I will show you uh, what it looks like in just a second. All right, guys, so this is what it looks like here. I've got the spigot or uh, spout in there. It's a, uh, it's got different names. People call it different names on YouTube. But basically, so the jacket, when I originally bought it, did not have a hole in here. So I actually had to um, cut a hole, drill a hole with a tap that looks similar to one of these in a 5 8 um, and then, uh, yeah, just, they to give you all the proper instructions on how not to damage it, how to keep it clean and looking professional. And the reason why it's, it's, uh, one of these are on here is so that way, uh, less chance of contamination because of air when dump, uh, dumping the tube. And I will show you what it looks like here in just a minute from the inside. All right. So this is what it looks like from the inside. So that way, uh, it catches the beer from the top allowing the sediment to stay at the bottom and uh, not having to get too much contamination. I know this stuff sounds pretty damn confusing for those of you guys uh, who don't know what this is all about. And um, I myself am getting into it. I've learned a lot. And basically, it sits in front of the measuring, which I have a, um, the jacket has a opening here. And I will show you what it looks like uh, all together. And don't worry about all the water spots and stuff like that. That's just for me cleaning it out. And then I'm going to use a special sanitizer and cleaner. And that'll get rid of everything and keep it uh, ready to start brewing. All right, so here we have it. And um, this is what it would look like, the final stage. Um, so it's basically like it's a tester spout, spigot, whatever you want to call it. Um, so when you dump, <clears throat> when you dump the, uh, the tube, and here's the lever here you dump the tube and every time you got to take this out um you're allowing air to get into it but when you uh in the last stages of the fermentation and get ready to collect your brew um by dumping this here uh and getting ready to put the uh, funnel down at the bottom to start collecting your your uh your beer there's still some settlement here at the top and uh that's the stuff you're gonna end up collecting but this allows to collect the beer on top and let the rest of the sediment come down to the bottom. And it's also used as a tester so you can test your beer and check the um, the volume to see, you know, what your ABV is and what have you. Um, so uh, pretty cool. There you have it. It's already strapped in. I'll go ahead and finish up the rest of uh, uh, the um, uh, setting everything up and I'll uh, hopefully bring you back some more footage. Oh, then sorry guys, I forgot to show you the window. So. This is the window here I was telling you that allow you to check your beer and this is the jacket to help protect against sunlight but there you can see the um, spigot here at the bottom uh, don't the glares yeah the glares picking up <laughs> the background but hopefully you guys can see uh, there you have it down there and uh, so the set it'll sit just above everything else and like I said, help collect oh, here, better angle. That that great part in the middle, that's the lever on the outside. It's the butterfly lever or uh, valve. And then you'll collect from the top, if that makes any sense. But yeah, forgot to show you that. All right, so here we have it. Um, it's all now sanitized and cleaned out and uh, ready to start putting some um, beer on the kettle here. Um, on the stove, should I say, and get to brewing. Um, here is a, uh, my, my sanitizing bucket that's got a twist off lid. It's got a sanitizing solution inside with a few of my items. Uh, most of the stuff, uh, that I'm going to be using, uh, now, um, for the meantime has already been added onto the fermenter and I got a few stuff on the table over there, um, that will need to be sanitized, uh, in the future. Uh, but as of lately, 
as of right now, uh, no, need, no need to worry. And this sanitizer um, is good. And I can reuse it when it's time to uh, clean out my bottles um, when that time comes. So it is good where it's at right here. Uh, nothing to get, get into it. It's got a, um, a rubber o-ring there and um, so yeah no need to worry and i uh, can reuse this when the time uh, permits all right guys so here we have it <clears throat> gonna go ahead and start getting to brewing here is the kit uh all the ingredients and everything that i need uh to get started gonna go ahead and start setting uh um pulling everything out and set, setting it aside so we can get started and i've i've, <clears throat> I've already uh, sanitized all of my equipment with this here and uh I will bring you some further uh, footage here in just a little bit. All right, guys, so this is everything that's in the kit. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and start uh, looking up some information and see what the instructions uh, require. And um, there you have it. So it does come with a checklist and it tell, comes with the directions and instructions and everything that you need. And uh, so I will be back with some more footage. All right, guys. So we're at the um, uh, sanitizing or sanitized water point. I'm gonna ready to boil. Uh, this water is uh, out of a Brita filter. Um, they says to add three gallons of water, bring to a uh, temperature of 155 degrees and then get ready to start pouring in our malt or I'm sorry, in our grain and then get ready to steep, almost like, you know, teabagging it. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I have cut open my bags here and I have uh, poured my grain into um, into this sock, which we're going to use to get ready to start steeping um, your grain into the hot water here. It's almost a... a the proper temperature and I'm gonna go ahead and start steeping and show you that in a little bit. All right, here we go guys, gonna get, start steeping it here. Just give it a few um, dunks and uh, f uh, some of the videos here are shown just to tie it off on the side of the, on the side of um, the handles here. Sorry, I got cut off there. I was just saying, uh, tie it off here at the handle and then let it sit for 20 minutes while maintaining um, proper temperature at 155 degrees and then after that i will get back to you guys all right guys so we have come to the 20 minute mark and uh kept that at the proper temperature now we're going to go ahead and remove remove this um bag out the way bring it up to a boil and as soon as we start seeing the first sign of uh boiling the bubbles and everything go ahead and turn it off and we're going to go ahead and put our uh, malt e uh, extract inside and then i will bring you guys that footage all right, guys, so the video says first signs of boiling over or uh, first signs of bubbles. Go ahead and turn off the burner. All right, guys, so it's time to go ahead and start adding um, <clears throat> our other additives in here. And uh, just before it started boiling over and getting messy, I was recommended to use a spray bottle to keep the bubbles from boiling over or keep the bubbles at bay and uh, didn't have any issues. As soon as they boiled over and the camera stopped, sprayed it down, everything uh, stopped, and I went ahead and... Um, they said, don't leave it on the burner, take it off to allow it to cool faster. And that's what I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my uh, malt extract and my lactose. Uh, it's a lactose and sugar uh, additive. I'm gonna go ahead and add this. Uh, go ahead and start stirring it with a, um, a stirring spoon. They got a, a special stirring spoon that they sell online uh, with the kit. Um, just to allow, not, this stuff's not supposed to come to the bottom. That's not a good thing. So you just um, distribute it uh, evenly and stir it and uh, not let it clump while the burner is off and it is off. And then we're going to go ahead and start <clears throat> stirring this stuff in when it's once it's uh, completely stirred and there's no clumps. Then we're going to go ahead and bring it to a boil and I uh, will bring you guys uh, that in just a little bit. All right. So this is going to I'm going to have to do this uh, off camera because it's going to require two hands but I do have the uh, bags open and getting ready to start stirring with this uh, stirring spoon that you can purchase. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, pretty sure you can pick up, you can use a whisk or something, I'm not sure. But just, you know, for shits and giggles, I decided to buy one just to have one 
handy and i'm gonna go ahead and start stirring this stuff in you gotta stir it in slowly so it doesn't clump down at the bottom and uh i will bring you uh, back some further uh, video all right guys so we've uh added our extract and our lactose sugars in here i've made sure that all the clumping has um uh been dissolved uh nothing sticking at the bottom i've made sure of it and i'll tell you right now man just just like this it already smells good it already tastes as good i've tasted everything that goes in here just you know just because i have never gotten a chance to smell nor taste or see what these ingredients look like before it, uh it's turned into beer and um yeah pretty cool experience man so i'm gonna go ahead and bring this up to a boil and um the burner is off so that way the ingredients the malt extract and the lactose don't stick to the bottom and burn um and i'm gonna go ahead and bring this to a boil and i will show you the next step in the process all right so here's what the steeping bag looks like i've got the water running uh getting ready for a uh ice shock bath um or an ice bath and um there we have it getting ready to uh, start boiling it on high and uh, we'll be adding these uh, hops here I labeled them just so I don't forget I mean it's it shows you know when you got to add it but just so I don't mix them up uh, first one um, add for 60 minutes the second one add 30 minutes before the 60 minutes is over and uh, yeah there we have it all right so we have reached our um, uh what they call a rolling boil just before it got to the top here i had it set on high i put it on medium uh sprayed it with the spray bottle to keep the um, overflow at bay and then uh yeah put it down on medium and now we got a rolling boil now we're going to go ahead and add our our first uh which would be 60 minutes from basically the way it goes is you'll add this for 30 minutes once 30 minutes are over, you add this one uh, at the next 30 minute mark at a total of six, uh, a total of one hour. So basically, they'll be add them for one hour. So 30 minutes this one, and then 30 minutes this one, and leave them inside. And uh, yeah, and I will bring you back the next video. All right, so we have got it cut open. Here we have it. Our hops that are um, basically put in. Um, um can't think of the word right now if i remember oh pallets there you go pallets and again i have tasted everything that has gone into this beer and holy fucking moly hops taste like shit <laughs> but uh it is a, a main ingredient or one of the main ingredients in uh brewing or your beers and uh we'll go ahead and add these now and i will bring you back the next footage all right guys so we are at the 30 minute mark 30 minutes from 60 minutes or 30 minutes from an hour um and uh we're gonna add the second portion of this cluster um bittering uh the, the bittering hops and uh here we go all right guys so we uh got it off the kettle or the stove should i say and it is now in a ice bath I gotta add some more water and ice to it. Um, and uh, it recommends to add a lid on it, and I have done so. And uh, we're gonna have to cool this down before we can add the yeast, or pitch the yeast, should I say. And I will get back to you guys uh, as soon as this is done. All right, guys, so I have got my uh, wort down to 75 degrees with my thermometer here uh just keeping constant uh uh temperature on it making sure that it's going to be okay and it's time to go ahead and start uh throwing this into the fermenter and pitching the yeast all right guys so i just dumped my wort into the vessel here in my catalyst i'm gonna go ahead and top it up just not you know not to let too much air into there and then i have to fill it up to the five gallon mark and uh get ready to start waiting and um check up checking up on it it's got to be at 75 degrees and um yeah we'll see how it goes i'm gonna go ahead and try to 
uh, stabilized at 75 degrees and uh, wait about what I think it I think it's about two hours before I can do my first dump uh, down at the bottom there and I will come back with that information all right guys so we got our uh, our uh, work inside the fermenter got it just a little bit above uh, five gallons no biggie and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start pitching our yeast we got to make sure that it was at 75 so that's pretty good 75 to 72 um, no biggie and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and start uh, I have my um, airlock on top here filled with a little bit of water you can see and uh, I'll pitch the yeast down at the bottom over here and put the airlock back on top and then we'll just wait for about I think it says um, two hours or so before we can start dumping the, the true bet down at the bottom but uh yeah I'll get back to you guys as soon as I uh, do that all right guys so it's time to go ahead and start pitching the yeast if you guys can see here I've already got it open and uh gonna go ahead and pour it down in here gonna pull the airlock off and I will get back to you in just a minute all right here we go time to start pitching the yeast And from here on out, we'll just wait for the uh, two minutes. Sorry, two minutes. The, uh, I think it's like two hours you gotta wait or so before you can do your first uh, uh, trump dump. And uh, that is it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the, um, sorry, the, um, can't think of the name right now i'm sorry guys the um airlock valve back on and then wait until it starts fermenting and i'll get back to you guys all right guys so here we have it um so during the first stage of fermentation uh they recommend using uh the breather tube instead of using the um the cap off a breather the one that i showed you guys before um, and then after the final stage, you can go ahead and use that. But because there's so much uh, foam up at the top, because the yeast, yeast has already been pitched, like a, you guys saw. Um, so now it's, it's it's activated and it's it's starting to foam up really, really good here. Uh, you can start seeing it starting to come up to the top of that tube. Um, and that's why they say use this first before using the other one, because uh, um, the other um, uh, breather... Uh, See if you guys can see that. So it allows, so if it does get sucked in, it can get sucked down at the bottom here. But what happens here is it allows, um, it allows for, uh, if dirt gets in, it can't be sucked back in because the hose is down in the water. And, um, <clears throat> and here you have it here. Um, so here's the, um, you can see the yeast and everything going to work here. Um, all the sediment is it rotates and uh, this is the stuff you'll be dumping out once this is all full um, but as of right now we'll just let it sit and uh, when it's time to do our our first dump um, I'll bring you guys that footage and you guys can see there how it's it's active now how it's foaming up at the top So uh, yeah, there you have it guys. And it's at the proper temperature. All right, so I will see you guys till the next video. Okay guys, so we have come to um, our first dump of the troop and uh, you gotta make sure that you take off this, um, the uh, uh, airlock uh, stopper at the top because if not it's gonna suck the liquid that you have in there down into the into the beer and you don't want that or to the uh, wort and then uh, we're going to go ahead and dump it and you can see there it's already settled and we're going to have a tray here just to catch whatever falls off the sides here uh, dump this here uh, sanitize under the butterfly valve with um oh i'm gonna drop my stuff here with uh with a spray bottle with our sanitizing um uh a solution that we have in there and then send it and then re-sanitize the jar, reattach it, and then we'll wait for the what is it recommended? I think it's like seven days, if I'm not mistaken, six or seven days. And then we'll do our second dump. 
And then uh, that's after that, we'll just wait what, I think it's another eight days or so. And then that's when it comes to the moment when we start racking our beer. But uh, yeah, let's do our first dump. I can't do this with the camera in one hand and dump in the other because it's gonna be really complicated, but uh, I'll come back to you in just a minute. All right, guys, so we have dumped it and uh, clean it out, re-sanitize it. I got a little dribble down at the bottom there because I was sanitizing the butterfly area. Um, but uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and dump it now and then wait for the remaining time uh, and we'll come back with that other video. Remember, I uh, gotta take the airlock off the top as well. All right, so took the airlock off the top. Redumped it, and then we're gonna go ahead and just wait. If you guys can see, it's still um, still moving around, and my wife's making all kinds of fucking noise in the background. But uh, yeah, there we have it. All right, guys, so we have come to our seven day mark. And we're going to go ahead and dump the uh, second, uh, um, how do you say, um, it's the second uh, dumping of the tube. And then we'll uh, sanitize the jar, sanitize up in the butterfly valve, close this off, or you'll close it off before you um, get ready to pull this off. And then like I said, so sanitize, reattach, and then reopen, and then let it sit for another, I think it's like five days or so. And then we'll do our final dump. And I'll bring you guys that uh, when the time comes. But um, I'm going to pause here, dump it, clean it out, sanitize it, and then I'll go ahead and reopen up the valve. All right, guys. So we um, went ahead and dumped it. And now it's time to open up the valve for the second part of this uh, fermentation process. And uh, we'll go ahead and let it sit for another five days once we open this up. But uh, it's already been sanitized through and through and uh here we go and <clears throat> try to get you a better picture there but there you have it you can see the yeast down at the bottom And uh, yeah, so I will be back with the further video uh, when the time comes. All right, guys, so the time has come to add these um, this additive uh, into the fermenter and then uh, wait for two weeks, two extra weeks um, for it to age and then we'll start our bottling day. All right, guys, so the time has come bottling day is here and uh here is the beer and gonna start sanitizing the bottle uh the bottles and then we're gonna go ahead and start um connecting our our hookups and everything i had a quick taste out of the um out of the test tube there but there you have it here is the if i were to make another batch of this beer i can reuse and collect this yeast this is all the good uh, yeast you want to collect um the yeast is down at the bottom here because there's no more sugars to uh, be consumed so basically you know they're asleep and here are the coconuts uh to give the uh beer that um chocolatey cocoa uh lactase a uh, lactose sorry um kind of um mouthfeel and taste uh, but yeah, this doesn't really do anything for the lactose, but there is lactose in the beer. So we're gonna go ahead and connect our our uh, our <coughs> our hose. Uh, this is where we connect our hose to start bottling, and I will show you guys that in just a bit. All right, guys. So here are the bottles. We're gonna start sanitizing. These are flip tops. I have my uh, sanitizer down at the bottom. I have all my flip tops down there. You can see my uh, funnel and my hose I want to be using actually not the funnel the funnel was for the um, for for those who haven't had the um, installation of that spigot um, installed so I'll just use the hose down at the bottom and then we'll get to sanitizing all these beer bottles and get to bottling um, I do have my um, sugar water already 
uh, boiled and it's cooling down now and I'll add that into the fermenter and um, that'll help uh, once I have everything in here and bottled up and capped off that'll help to um, carbonate the beer and we'll have it sit for two weeks all right guys so I have hooked up my hose I have it sitting in my bucket over here and the sanitizing solution and there's the uh the stopper the clip off and uh i have already sanitized all of my uh tops my flip tops all the bottles and then i have my um give me a sec um i have my um sugar water cooling down here because it's not so it can't uh, warm up the beer and i'll add that inside to the in, in the fermenter through the top and mix it up and then we'll get to bottling all right so we have the lid off the top i know it doesn't look uh very attractive <laughs> but that's all the uh dried up yeast and everything that's collected up on the top and um I strained it a little bit. You can still see some of the cocoa nibs uh, at the top versus um, down at the bottom. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, spin this around, uh, give it a little um, stir and see what we uh, collect further up at the top. And uh, here we go. Here's the uh, watered sugar. Pour it in and we're gonna give it a stir. All right, so here's our sanitized, um, um, what do you call, stir. <laughs> um, just give it a, just a small stir. Nothing to invigorate or get any of the sediment off the walls here. Just um, nothing too aggressive. And that's it, guys. And I'm going to go ahead and start bottling. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So I finally put all the tops on the bottles. They are not filled yet, but I had to get them, uh, everything ready. And now let's get to pouring the beer. All right, guys. So here we have the holes into the beer. And this will be our very first pour. And uh, don't really need a stopper because I can stop it from over here. Um but let's uh let's pour our first beer shall we here we go don't know how fast this thing pours but there we have it and i want to go ahead and shut it off and there we go so this uh fermenter does 48 to 50 bottles um, so I got a lot to go guys. See you guys soon. All right, guys. So here we have it. All the beers are filled, topped, rinsed, and, uh, put back in these, um, the bottling, um, boxes that they came in and, uh, going to have them just sit here in the corner and, uh, wait two weeks for them to finish doing what they got to do. And I'll bring you the, uh, first, um, bottling uh popping the top on the first bottle of uh, my first brew see you soon all right guys so we are here it is finally time to uh sample our first beer uh however i will be taken off tomorrow um and i'll be trying this beer out two days early um i still have a window of letting it uh, age for two more weeks if I if I really wanted to but I did um, it's just two days shy of two weeks um, so we'll give it a a taste and hopefully we have uh, some gas built up inside the bottle um, the carbonation and otherwise um, in other words sorry and we're gonna go ahead and pour it and see what we get so I'm gonna try to do this with one hand um, do my best and uh, let's see what we get here. All right, so there is some fizz, some smoke that just came out. 
it is carbonated so that is a plus and we will give it a slight pour i'll try to do it with one hand it's gonna be hard to do this and get it on camera and it is not filtered so we're gonna have some sediment down at the bottom we'll do our best to pour it without making a mess so you see we do have we do have some head coming up there which is what we want and uh there we have it let's uh give it a taste all right guys so uh cheers and hopefully we uh get some good taste out of this so um right off the nose here it could be i might later have to i might i might have to let it sit on a, a few few more days um i think it smells a little yeasty i'm not sure let's give it a, a taste here that's actually not bad um Not bad, but I think I have to let it sit a few more days. Um, yeah, I'm actually I'm actually not too uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, bummed about this. Um, yeah, I might have to let it sit a few more days, um, but at least we got carbonation. That's a plus. Um, beer looks good. It has a nice head um, when I poured it. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see it's got um, it's got some nice bubbles that stick to the glass. Um, so yeah, I uh, can't complain. Um, we'll get go ahead and sip on this, uh, let it cool down, and see if I get any other uh, taste out of it as it, as it's warming down. Should I say? Excuse me. And um, I'll bring you back some more information. And um, I will. And if not, I'll um, do another video with. Um, uh, letting it uh, sit or age for another week or so and see what we get but until then cheers guys and we'll see you guys in the next video later and i almost forgot this but here i hold i'm holding it up to the light it's got uh it's got a really nice um uh some really nice color to it it's pretty dark you can see down at the bottom of the uh, glass there the little bubble there um compared to the light i'm holding it up uh yeah, really nice dark beer. Um, I dig it. All right, guys. So here we have it. It is um, just a little, a little over two weeks. Um, and we're going to go ahead and pop the second bottle. And here we go. Got a little smoke there. And I'm going to try to pour this um, without making too much of a mess and here we go so um last beer i had um was uh not all that bad um got about two fingers ahead there so it is definitely carbonated and um gonna go ahead and give it a taste here and fingers crossed that this is uh <laughs> that this is the good one so a lot of little small mistakes were done along the way so um if it's not uh what i hope it'd be um then uh second time's a charm i guess um um for the next batch that i say um so yeah i'll go ahead and turn the camera around and Give it a taste. All right, guys. Cheers. Let's. Here's the hoping. Okay. It has definitely changed. And in the positive, uh, not bad. Not bad. For all the mistakes I did, um, not bad. Um, it's pretty cool uh, having your own beer, man. Um, nice lacing, you can see there. Um, 
definitely some carbonations you can see and uh look at the lacing holds nicely um not bad but uh there we have it guys uh, hope you guys enjoy the video thanks for joining along uh patiently watching the the, the video uh by the time you see or reach this part of the video, I don't know how long this video is gonna be, how many clips I added. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, I apologize if it is long, cause I don't know. Uh, I won't know until I edit it. By the time you see this, it's already been edited and posted. Um, but um, yeah, so this is my um, chocolate milk stout from uh, Craft Brew and pretty happy with it. Um, is it the best? No, uh, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to remember. Um, a lot of mistakes were made, like I said before. Um, but is it drinkable? Yes, very drinkable. I've had some stouts and porters in the past that were complete garbage that I would not even attempt to try to drink. And this one, um, yeah, I'm very happy with this. I can drink this without a problem and I'm pretty happy and proud of it. So cheers guys and I will catch you guys on whatever next video comes next. Later guys.